Hi, so I'm going to try something new during this whole isolation thing and share readings during the night for bedtime stories. And I've gone through the list of what's under public domain that I own and we happen to have several books from the Bobsy Twins series that I read when I was growing up. So that's what we're going to start tonight and I hope you enjoy. And this is what my little girl is going to listen to for her bedtime for the next few nights. Hi. So tonight we're going to start with the Bobsy Twins in school, at school. The book is by Laura Lee Hope. Chapter One, A Circus Train. Ooh, glasses, glasses would be good here. Yeah, it doesn't that make me look old. Here we go. Chapter One, A Circus Train. We're almost home, only half an hour to Lakeport. Nan Bobsey glanced at her wristwatch and then looked out the window of the speeding train. We've been away two months, her twin brother Bert remarked. Things at home will seem strange to us. Bert and Nan sat across from each other in facing seats. Beside them were their younger brother and sister, Freddie and Flossie. Freddie pressed his nose against the window pane. It was starting to get dark, and here and there a light from a house blinked in the distance. If we're near home, said Freddie, I'd better tell Snoop. The little boy stood on the seat, reached overhead to the baggage rack, and got a basket. He set it down and lifted the lid a little bit. Snoop! Snoop! he called softly. We'll be home in a little while. Then you won't have to be shut up anymore. You can chase a mouse in our garden. The black kitten inside the basket answered with a purr, as if to say he had had enough of the country and the seashore and would be glad to get back to the big Bobsy home in Lakeport. Freddie closed the lid and set the basket back up on the rack. When does school open, Nan? Flossie asked. The little girl had been talking about school for the past few days because she and Freddie were going into the first grade. In two weeks, said Nan, smiling. Oh, what fun, Flossie exclaimed. I'll say so, Bert said. I'll see all my friends again. I wonder what Charlie Mason did this summer. Probably sailed his boat on the lake, Nan replied. She meant Lake Matoka, which was not far from the Bobsy home. Mr. Bobsy owned a large boathouse on the lake and several boats. We're going to have fun on the lake with our class, said Bert. Remember Mr. Tetlow's promise? Nan did, and when Freddie asked her what the promise was, Nan told her how their principal had promised to take Nan and Bert's class on a boat picnic across the lake after the fall term opened. We're going to the woods and study wild bird life, said Nan enthusiastically. And our school's going to beat this year, Bert declared. The birds, Nan asked, laughing. Oh no, said Bert. I'm thinking about our school basketball team. We're going to beat center school just like we did last year. If Nanny Rugg doesn't get too rough and spoil things, Nan said. Maybe he turned into a good boy this summer, Flossie remarked. If that's possible, Bert declared rather doubtfully. Gee, I hope so, said Freddy turning his nose from the window. Then he won't chase me anymore. All the Bobsies hoped that Danny Rugg, the school bully, had turned over a new leaf and would not try to make trouble for them as he had done in the past. Mr. and Mrs. Bobsey, the twins' parents, who were sitting in the next seat, heard their children's talk and smiled. I'm glad they don't mind that vacation is over, whispered Mr. Bobsey. As you may know, there were two pair of twins. Bert and Nan were 12 years of age, and Freddie and Flossie were nearly six. The two older children were tall and slim and had brown hair and eyes. The younger twins were sturdy and fair with dimpled cheeks, light hair, and blue eyes, and all of them were full of fun. At this moment, the Bobsies were on their way home from the seashore, where they had visited the home of their Uncle William and Aunt Emily Minturn at Ocean Cliff. Mrs. Bobsey glanced out the growing darkness and said to her husband, Hadn't you better get some of the bags together, Richard, and tell Dinah we're nearly there? I think I will, he answered, and went up the aisle a little way to where a stout colored woman was sitting. She was Dinah, the Bobsey's good-natured cook, who had gone with them to the shore. When Mr. Bobsey spoke to her, she arose and began to collect the twins' belongings. Mother, said Flossie, 
I'm thirsty. May I get a drink? I want one too, Freddy said. Come on, Flossie, we'll go to the water cooler together. I can reach the paper cups. But I want to drink out of our ocean cliff cup, Flossie said. Mother, may I? Flossie was referring to a beautiful silver cup which had been given to the Bobsies just before they had left the seashore. It was a gift from a family whom they had helped, and the Bobsies would always treasure it. All right, said Mrs. Bobsey, but be careful not to drop it. She reached into her bag for the lovely cup. I'll carry it, said Freddy. I'm the biggest. You are not, declared his sister. I'm just as big. Well, anyhow, I'm a boy, went on Freddy, and Flossie could not deny this. And a boy always carries things for a girl. <sighs> carry it then, Flossie said, and their mother gave Freddy the cup. When the little twins approached the water cooler at the end of the car, Freddy stopped. Look at the lady, he whispered excitedly. In the seat just ahead sat a very, very large woman who occupied nearly the whole seat. She was so large that even Snoop would have had a hard time squeezing in beside her. She is fat, Flossie agreed. Did you ever see a lady so big before? Only in a circus, Freddy whispered. She'd make two dinas, Flossie went on. No, she wouldn't, Freddy contradicted, because Mommy says there'll never be another Dinah. The sudden sway of the train nearly made Flossie fall, and she grabbed Freddy. Look out, he cried. You almost made me drop the cup. When they reached the water cooler, Freddy half filled the cup and held it toward his sister. She drank all the water. Do you want more? Freddy asked before getting a cupful for himself. Just a little, Flossie replied. I'm hot. Freddy gave his sister some more water and then took some himself. As he drank, his eyes were constantly upon the fat lady. She noticed him and smiled. Freddy was somewhat confused and looked down. Just as he did, there was a shrieking, grinding sound and a jar that shook the whole car. The trains come to such a sudden stop that almost everybody was thrown from a seat. The little twin sat down hard in the aisle, surprised as he was by the sudden jolt. Freddie nevertheless noticed that the fat lady had not budged from her seat. She was too heavy. It's a wreck, cried a man suddenly. We're off the track, shouted another. It's an accident anyhow, came still another voice, and everybody seemed to start talking at once. Mr. Bobsey hurried down the aisle to where the twins sat, still dazed. When he found that they were not hurt, he led them back to their seat. The older twins were already looking out the window. There were many lights up ahead on the track. Suddenly, Bert shouted, I see an elephant and a camel, Nan cried. I want to see, exclaimed the small twins together and pushed their faces eagerly against the glass. There's a lion in a cage, screamed Flossie. It's a circus, Freddy shouted gleefully, clapping his hands. Now we can go to a circus. Just as he got out of his seat, a brakeman came into the car. There's no danger, he said. Please keep your seats. A circus train that was running ahead of us went off the track and some of the animals are loose. Our engineer nearly ran into an elephant. That's why the sudden stop. We'll go on as soon as possible. Anyone hurt? When the brakeman was told that nobody in the car had suffered more than a shaking up, he went into the next coach. A circus, said Bert. This is a real adventure. Let's watch them catch the animals. And that's the end of chapter one. See you tomorrow night for chapter two. Good night.